all countries have educational systems. Educational systems all try to achieve very, very similar goals. And every country in the world, I think, is trying to find what is the best way to organize our educational system. And so we see things like the results of the PISA study, for example, and we see that the US performs kind of a middling range in, in, the, in the, the PISA studies. And so it would be foolish, I think, not to look at the results of those studies and say, what is it that the countries that perform very well, countries like uh, Korea and Finland, what is it that they're doing that we're not doing in the US? And could we actually take any of the things that they do and do them here to improve our educational systems? So if we go back to, let's say, the 19th century, then it seemed that in many countries of the world, your fate in life was pretty heavily determined by the kind of family that you were born into. And that was because the connections that that would give you and the resources that those families had in order to give you an education and so on, they were so unequally distributed between different social classes that there was a very close link between social class origins and social class destination. And then in the 20th century, we believe those links began to weaken. And they began to weaken in large part because of the importance of education and the fact that education itself became less of the preserve of people from more advantaged backgrounds and it spread to people from poorer backgrounds. But starting around 1990, a consensus developed and this consensus was called the hypothesis of persistent inequality. And this argued that despite all the increases in educational attainment in these countries over the 20th century, the differences in attainment between students from different social class origins had actually remained pretty much constant. I have to say, we thought it was extremely implausible. In fact, we thought it was ridiculous. So we thought what we should do is we should test this ourselves. We shouldn't take other people's word for it. We should get our own data and we should see does this thesis hold or not. So we set up our research to look at how class differences in educational attainment might have changed over the 20th century. And we adopted a comparative perspective. We wanted to look at how these things had changed in more than one country. And we ended up comparing eight European countries. Not only did the educational systems differ, they also changed in different ways over the 20th century, and they changed at different times. So we thought that by comparing these countries and seeing at what points in time the gaps between different social classes had changed, that we might actually be able to see whether some of these changes in educational systems and in society in general, whether they'd had any effect on educational inequality. Our research completely contradicted the persistent inequality thesis. We found that over the course of the 20th century, class inequalities in educational attainment actually did decline. And in some countries, they declined by a lot. Countries where class inequalities declined, they had made a lot of policy changes in their educational systems. Early in the 20th century, many secondary schools actually charged fees. And over the course of the 20th century, government stepped in and they reduced these fees and eventually they abolished them entirely and they took over the funding of secondary education themselves. But many countries went a lot further than that. And Sweden is a very good example of this. Starting back in the 1920s, Swedish policy in schools was really quite revolutionary. They introduced, for example, health care within schools, school meals for, for children, and they very rapidly moved to a comprehensive school system. In other words, children were no longer streamed into academic and non-academic tracks. They were all put in what are now called comprehensive schools. Among the countries that we compared, the US was not included. That was because we couldn't find data that would make the US really comparable to these eight European countries. Nevertheless, people have looked at this in the US context. And what they've found is that class inequalities in educational attainment do seem to have declined over the 20th century, but rather modestly. As inequality grows, this trend may have come to a halt.
And rather than educational attainment continuing to be spread more widely among people from different social classes, it now becomes much more dominated by people who have greater resources. And because resources are more unequally distributed now at the beginning of the 21st century than, than they have been for almost the past 100 years, the concern is that social mobility is then going to slow down as well, because people from poorer backgrounds simply can't compete with people from better off backgrounds. Education is really the thing that breaks the link between the social class someone is born into and the social class that they themselves end up in. And if an educational system doesn't do that, then clearly it's failing. It's failing not only the people in the country, but it's also failing the country itself because it's not making the best use of the potential resources of the people of that, of that country.